<clears throat> okay, so you either clicked on this thumbnail hoping that I would give you some advice on which kind of card to buy, or you just like me talking about random stuff, and so you're already a subscriber. Hopefully, I can satisfy both of those uh, two in this one video. So, as I said, kind of title is what kind of car I should buy. However, there are three counter questions that I want to answer before we proceed, okay? Now, before I do that, I would like to do a quick little wrist check. And I am wearing my Orient Mako USA 2, which I did finally get in after a long and annoying wait time with USPS and other fun company. And the drama still has not settled, but that is for another video. If you didn't see my previous video where I did a little bit of ranting about that and how what makes up good customer service, you know, go check that out. I'll leave a link down in the description to the last video. Now, <clears throat> on to those three questions, okay? So when people, when people find out, like, I, I really like cars and, you know, I like fixing cars and modifying vehicles, they start asking me, what kind of car should I buy? And I think to myself, oh my goodness, do you not... All right, first of all, I don't know you. I do not know your tastes. So uh, it's kind of like asking a stranger to make a huge purchase for them. Probably the second largest purchase of their life is um, probably not a good idea. You wouldn't let a stranger choose your pet. So I don't know if you should let a stranger choose the kind of car you buy. Right? That just makes sense. But... I can offer some good advice. I, at least I think it's good advice, okay? So, bear with me. So, first question is, why are you purchasing the vehicle? That's the very first thing I want you to ask yourself. Why are you purchasing the vehicle? Now, I'm going to assume we've moved past the whole, I am buying this for transportation, okay? Because, obviously, you're buying it to get around. If you're buying it for it to sit in the garage, that is a very expensive paperweight. Or, yeah, don't do not do that. That's really dumb, okay? Unless it's a collector's item, but that's a whole nother spiel, okay? So, you're asking yourself, why am I buying this? Is this to drive around the block and impress people? Uh, first of all, I don't really suggest buying a vehicle to impress people. It can help mask things like your um, confidence. It can boost your confidence, but it does not really replace who you are. That's, that's another little tidbit of advice for you, okay? The car does not make you or break you, okay? Now, in some industries, it really does matter what you drive, okay? Because it's a public perception, okay? So, <clears throat> a good example of it is a realtor. Realtors, if they're going and meeting clients and, you know, if they're driving a certain vehicle, it probably makes its different statement to some clients over others. But that doesn't mean you can't be a really good realtor without having a certain kind of vehicle. But you have to understand why you're purchasing it. What will it do for you? For instance, and this is a nice model, actually it's a really old model of a Dodge Ram 1500. Mm, I'm not really a big Dodge, guy, a Dodge fan. I actually like Chevys a little bit better. Or GMC actually, the same thing. Is if I am purchasing a pickup truck, Am I using it to tow a trailer out to the lake? Am I choosing it as a work truck? What, like, what's the purpose? If I'm choosing a minivan, am I hauling the kids around? W what am I doing? What's it doing? What's it doing for me? For instance, if I were to look at this vehicle and it's a 370Z, um, now I, I don't have one of these. I, I really do like the 370Z, but I, you know, I, I don't have one. I probably won't ever buy one even though I was like absolutely obsessed with these cars when I was younger. Like when I was in, um, when I was in high school and um, like, or like in, in university too, uh, is that if I look at this and I'm like, okay, well, is this really a, you know, something that I, I would buy? Is this, is this practical for me really? Um, and that's kind of, that's kind of the second, the second segue into the second question is, is does, does a vehicle like this, um, suit my lifestyle okay or the vehicle that i'm thinking about getting will will it suit my lifestyle will this purchase suit my lifestyle so for instance if you're thinking of a truck 
and you literally do very short commutes and there's no reason for you to buy one like you don't do any towing you don't do anything like that um is there really a big reason for you to purchase a vehicle that gets vastly inferior fuel economy numbers and usually costs more to insure plus you know obviously larger vehicles cost more than smaller vehicles so do you want to tie up a lot of money in something that you're not going to use and at that point i think it's actually more smart if you look at purchasing something that you are that you're going to be used to the fullest extent daily okay so if i were to now a lot of people would be like oh well you're not going to use a sports car every day i mean you can depending on where you live right so and that's that's actually a really good point to bring up is your climate that you live in now a lot of people will say okay for instance if you live honestly i'm gonna say a lot of cars are designed for sunny california and that's about it it's like they're designed for that one specific climate and not really a whole lot of other places so i don't know but if i were to think about this car this is not a good all-around winter car rear wheel drive is not the best platform for winter driving you preferably want to get a front wheel drive or an all-wheel drive vehicle now okay before before we move forward there's gonna be that one person who's gonna i'm gonna get flack for this and you'll be like bruh you know i can just you know i just i just put these uh winter uh winter good winter tires on my car and i uh you know i just you know, like I, I, I just, I just put a bunch of sandbags in. Blah 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 blah. Like, oh my goodness. Okay, it's it's annoying. Like, uh, like yeah, I get it. Yeah, good winter tires make a huge difference. Sandbags in the back of the car make a difference. But overall, the platform isn't as good as other ones. And I'm not saying it can't be. I'm just saying that whatever. Those people are also the kind of people who argue and they're like, oh, it's just so much better. Blah. And I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. You're the guy with the welded diff in your S13 and you're just kind of doing weird stuff or any other random car. You usually like drift missile. You're making a drift missile and you go wrap it around a pole because you're driving like an idiot, okay? So, I mean, maybe there's driver error in that, but whatever. So, yeah. You have to understand what you're, what basically does this to your lifestyle and i would say probably another thing actually no let me bring this back is if i had a family i i mean i i do have a family but not like you know wife and kids stuff like that no no, no yeah i like that um but <clears throat> if i had kids this car is not practical for children or well to have children in it i i do not see a place where i could put children i could put one child in the passenger seat and then probably tie one to the hood of the car and to the roof but other than that, I find no way to get children to school in this car. It's a, I call two-seater vehicles. And obviously, do not tie children to the roof of the car. I, I don't, I don't believe I should have to say that. But, you know, there's probably some idiot out there who would probably think, oh, you know, he said it might be a good idea. Mm -mm, don't do that. Disclaimer. But yeah, honestly, I view cars that have two seats as the relationship car, Okay. And I mean, what I, what I mean by that is you have one person and another person, any more people in that relationship, and it gets um, kind of awkward and it usually doesn't end well, okay? So you didn't think you were coming to watch this, uh, this, this video for relation, relationship advice, but you got it. So um, I didn't even charge you for it. You should be happy. Yeah, so now, after you figured out, does this vehicle suit my needs? Or will it will it suit my lifestyle you have to ask yourself about budget and that's one thing that i feel like a lot of people don't even factor and don't even think about okay so you need to really think about the budget and a lot of people what they do is they're like oh my five thousand dollars that will get me a lamborghini no it won't okay no it won't so stop being unrealistic and i don't mean this okay like a lot of people will be like oh you're being offensive no i'm not being offensive i want to be realistic okay so and there's two ways two two ways we can go about solving this either a first of all realize that the features or what what kind of your aspirational uh, vehicle you have to spend more to get there okay you have to either do that so spend more to get there now only if you have the means only if you have financial means should you be spending however if you don't have the financial means do not overspend realize that that budget is there 
and stay within it. If you have the money, go above, stop being cheap, go above and spend to get what you actually want. Don't just complain that no one has something for what you for what you really feel like paying. Because at the end of the day, a Lamborghini is not worth five grand. Okay. You can't buy a new car for five grand. Maybe maybe in another country, and it's not even a car, maybe it's a weird tricycle. So, but besides the point, you have to know your budget, you have to stay within it. Okay. Don't don't overspend because I find that's the that's that one of the hugest things that lead people into debt is overspending. Do not overspend and do not buy things to impress people. Two big things. Life advice, I guess. But so yeah, those those three questions that that you should be answering before you even start looking at things. When, once you've kind of reached that check stop, by all means, those, as, as I just kind of put in conclusion, you need to know why you're buying this. Why, why are you purchasing the car? You also very much need to know how it's gonna suit your lifestyle. And then you also need to know what your budget is. How much are you gonna be working with, okay? So now this is the, I would say, the springboard for the series in the sense of I want to be talking about you know pros and cons and uh, teaching you guys whether or not you've purchased or you're, you're purchasing your first vehicle or you know your hundredth vehicle. I want to give you kind of ideas on you know talking about like financing, leasing, different different things like that. Uh, pros and cons of you know buying used versus new, um, <clears throat> like warranties and different stuff like that. Because I think that there's like a lot of, not a lot of people talk about that, and I honestly don't want you to really be getting your advice from the person that's trying to sell it to you. Because at the end of the day, it's a corporation, they're trying to make money. Sometimes they have your best interest at heart, but a lot of time they have their own pocketbook's best interest at heart in the pocketbook of the, you know, the dealership or wherever they work. So that's, that's everything that I want to get to for today. Thank you very much for you know, listening. It does mean a lot. If you do like the content, please subscribe. There's going to be more fun stuff in the future. Subscribe, like the video, you know, leave a comment. Talk about whatever vehicle you're thinking about buying. Um, and then also um, do follow my Instagram account. Uh, and if you want to stay in contact there, you can ask me questions. Uh, I, I will I will answer eventually. I will get around to most of all this stuff. Um, I, I do get busy though. But anyways, um, thank you very much. Um, you guys stay out of trouble. Make sure you have a very, very wonderful, fantastic day. So take care. And until then, see ya.